So hello everybody, welcome to this Let's Play episode and uh, we this time we have a, a guest and this guest is June, he is a good friend of mine and um, yeah he's gonna be providing uh, additional commentary today instead of Hugo, Hugo has been busy with his work and other things so but he, we'll see him soon enough, so anyway say hi June. Hi everyone, how's it going? Yeah, so Anyway, this is Rich Racer Type 4 for the PlayStation. This game came out in 99, I suppose, right? Yeah, so it sounds about right, yeah, in, in the, like, not quite <laughs> 2000. For the story, right? Yeah, not quite 2000, not quite in the 90s, yeah. Yeah, it actually, like, the, the tournament in the game is called, like, Real Racing Roots 99. Yeah, the RRR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this game has a bunch of motifs with the R, and, like, it's you know, Rich Racer, but, yeah, Type R also, also. Uh, yeah, so this is basically the fourth game, technically, if you want to be really technical, uh, in terms of the franchise of Witch Racer, right? And interesting about this game is that it doesn't share much staff with anything else except Rage Racer, which is the game that came before this one. Mm. But it doesn't share almost any staff with uh, Ridge Racer 5, or the original Ridge Racer, or Revolution, which is the one that came before this one. So that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it shares some staff, like the development staff in terms of engineering, like the programmers and some of the uh, visual design uh, people, but it's like the director, for example, and the course designers uh, are not shared, which is interesting. Like, this is why, that's why I guess this game has a kind of a weird vibe to it, or a very specific vibe to it. Oh, hit, They're watching the cinematic right hitch, now. Hitchhiking <laughs> failed, I guess. Oops. Oh, Oops. no. Wow, he yeah, actually stopped. <laughs> wow. He stopped. Stops like really, really far away because you know he's Ooh, probably going this like cutscene has not aged well. <laughs> Man, that, I think like back then this was amazing. Yeah, I remember right? it being like, really awesome looking. I mean, the uh, the cutscene itself is good, but the modeling of like Reiko is like oof, I'm not sure <laughs> doesn't really hold up. But yeah, so that girl that shows up in this is uh, Reiko. My Reiko. I don't think she has a na uh, last name. <laughs> na na Nagase, Nagase Reiko. Yeah. Nagase, yeah. yeah. I'm the, so, I'm the weave in the department, so you can rely on me. Yes, so <laughs> she, basically she <laughs> she's like uh, the mascot for this game. They're, that's been kind of a thing from oh. Rage Racer also. Mm. So they also had a, a mascot. I think it was the same girl, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, they She cameos in the very first game, but she's not officially named till Rage Racer, I believe. Oh, right, yeah. right, okay. So yeah, so there you go. So she's like the mascot yeah. for those games. Anyway, so we're starting a new campaign, as you would. Grand Prix mode. All these colors, man. This, the, the UI in this game has influenced me to this day. <laughs> I think this influenced all of us. Uh, I think the, I mean, my the channel here, right, has those like, oranges, right, and the, the black thing. And I mean, it's this game has been a, a, a very, very large influence on both of us uh, in terms of like graphics. Yeah, it's been like lasting, yeah, lasting influence, just like aesthetically, period, music, you know, design, yeah. the colors, everything. Yeah, so this is how the, the game is structured. There is uh, three heats, or technically two heats and one final GP, and basically you progress through the races, and as you complete the heats, you get a new car, uh, depending on how you perform in the heats, right? And then basically, well, you advance until you finish the game. So the game is not particularly long, but there's many paths to actually finish it. And there are, well, four different um, racing teams. We will meet them right after this tutorial. And also four uh, makes for cars, or car brands. Uh, car brands actually were introduced in Rage Racer, right? Yeah, you get to pick two, yeah, but, uh, but this is the first time where it's like the most direct. It's like, it's like this game has a story for some reason. And it's like, yes. <laughs> and it's like one of the most memorable things about it. It's like you don't expect like this, like you know, arcade style racing game to have a story, but there's like here's this actual narrative. It's interwoven narrative. So yeah, not only yeah. does it have a narrative, but it actually has like the the characters are interconnected. Yeah, they're like, there's like they stories, they yeah. know each other yeah. and like they have a history. One of yeah. the when, like in this particular um, run, we're gonna run with the it Italians. Are oh, you picking Sol Sol Okay, all right. Yes, all right. I'm picking Sol right. because I lo I love that that team okay. story. So is so like over the top. My personal favorite team is Team Dig because it's like an underdog story. Oh yeah, yeah. I like Dig. Dig's really cool yeah. too because they're like the underdogs, right? But to show off the one of the iconic storylines, I guess Sol is pretty good actually. That's a good story. Yeah, it's it's super dramatic yeah. in a very Japanese way. It's, it's very yeah, Japanese, yeah, the so story is actually super, like, you know, like, melodramatic and JP style, for sure. 
Yes, it is. It is very much like J drama like type. Because, uh, for example, one of the 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 team owners, like here, we're yeah. talking to the team. Oh, owner I love these porches, man. Level, I love all the porches. They're so, so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they're like this dude is like really 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 no like no nonsense right, right? he's like you have to be the best because we're the best yeah. like, well, so you're a new driver too so that their expectations of you are like nothing right it's like okay you better win or we're gonna fire you or whatever right it's yeah like, I mean it's like you better not have any objections to winning yeah. all the time or they have like, like or their expectations are so low like, I think you just said like hey you don't have to do well whatever I don't expect much from you hey right? pick your car whatever dude <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you are not the only racer because right. every car has two. Like every uh, team has two cars in the race. Okay. Oh, that's right. Oh, that, actually, they go they go into that in the story too. Actually, okay. I'm not sure, but I think one of them does. But not in this in this particular. Oh. I mean, it's implied story. though because like this story is connected to Pack Team, and you realize there were two drivers in Solvo in the past. Yes, right? so then, exactly. Yeah. And one of them was the son of the guy yeah. from the Terrazzi yeah. right? or yeah. whatever. There, there is a, there's a thing. Did you pick Asaluda? So anyway, he, are you picking Asaluda? Yes, I am uh, picking Asaluda. Of course, course, I, course I am. Iconic. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and it's like do you have different manufacturers, and each, uh, you see the type there. It says type grip on the top, type drift, and that uh, indicates the kind of, uh, well, handling the car has. So Asaluda and Lizard have uh, drift types. And they're both the faster accelerating cars in terms of the of the lizard, and Asluto has the fastest cars in terms of top speed. Yeah, drift all the way, so man. Of course, drift all the way. Yeah, and they're drift cars. Of course. <laughs> the Japanese and the French have then grip cars, and they're like more focused on you know you have to brake more, you have to kind of actually drive how you would drive, but yeah. Yeah, but I don't know how to drive IRL, so I just pick drift and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so heats. Anyway, so this is the first uh, first race. I'm not well. This is also kind of cute how it does like the little graphic. I love that every course has a unique logo too, like in the corner. Yes, thing. and it has also a name, right? Yeah. And it has also a time, and it feels like an actual event. Yeah. Well, location like too. They're trying to they, make it. They, yeah, yeah, location they, and everything. Real life locations. Like the races happen in, in Yokohama. Yeah, right? Japan, I mean, most of it is Japan, but there's like one in like New York, one in like LA. There is in yeah. there is yeah there is in, in USA. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot in Yokohama, actually. Wait, so this is... Oh, iconic. Yes. Pearl Busso, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> when you think... I think I when, mean when the... you think R4, you think, I think you, you think this song. This is like the iconic song, I think. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say the soundtrack to this game is extremely important to the whole game. Yeah, for <laughs> I sure. mean, yeah. Ridge Racer has always had a very important soundtrack, like in terms of the game. Uh, but this game in particular went a little bit... I guess at the, the time also, but it has a very kind of special feel to it. Mm. And there is, of course, uh, in case anybody's interested, there is an actual re remix uh, of this game for the anniversary, the 20th uh, anniversary for R4. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, year. that's cool. And it's uh, fantastic, and it has like the entire album, and also remixes by the actual composers of the song, and other people too from the sound, uh, Namco sound stuff. That's awesome. So it's actually really good. It's really, really good. Yeah, so this is basically the starter race, and... Uh, in this race, in the first uh, heat, you can place third, second, or first, and you'll still advance. But depending on the ranking you get, or depending on, the, on your place in the race, it changes the outcome of what happens on which car you get in the second heat. So that, that way, this game has a ludicrous amount of cars, because depending on the combination of places you get in the different races, you get different combinations of cars. So, and this, this came out after like Gran Turismo and it was kind of one of those things where you notice they were kind of competing for that little thing of oh it has 500 cars yes well it has a, a lot of cars like four, 400 something cars but the problem is that a lot of those cars are the same car but just upgraded so let's say you place third in these two races you keep the same car but it's just faster so you, you, get a actual, you don't get an actual new car but it counts as a new car so yeah, I believe it's three, three 320 so cars, and if you get all of the, you get the special pack pack car or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it is a, a large number yeah. of cars. I mean, Gran Turismo had a little less than uh, 200 cars at this point, like the first game. The second one has a, a much more cars, but, but the first one has less. So this was kind of kind of uh, trying to get to that kind of route, I guess, or it was a number to put on the on the, on the case. Oh, uh, that drift. Either way. <laughs> There's that drift. 
I mean, uh, I'm not playing as well as I played this in my life because you know I haven't played this in a long time. But I did actually, you know, get this to, get this to work. But there are a couple of of places in this game that have really really absurd drifts that I couldn't couldn't nail. <laughs> I love this too. They always have a unique like replay version of the track that plays. Right? There's a couple yeah. of replay songs actually. Yeah. Like yeah, the unique, unique versions just for the replays. I really like. I mean, they have, yeah. they have a lot of like interesting just small details they just cram into this game. Really appreciate that. But it's not only the the fact that the presentation is like that, but also the d details within the race itself. Like the airplane that like, shows up on the second lap, and you know every aspect of the of the of the race itself. Like it's as if it was like um, scripted almost. Like the stuff that happens in the track. So it, it does give it a feel of, uh, of something like a little bit more alive, I guess. Because mm -hmm. that was one of the things, if you play this game and you compare it to something like, like I guess Gran Turismo is a good comparison. Gran Turismo's tracks are, are good and all, but they don't have this feeling of being uh, alive or they don't feel like an actual event. Yeah. Like in this case, it does. And you have like the crowd and everything, but also those small details that contribute to that kind of feeling. What's funny too, right? They they reuse like some track areas, but like it actually gives the feeling of like, oh, this is actually the same place. It's just like a different part of this location or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. also because the times that vary. Yeah. Like if you look at the some of the races have the, the, the hour. same exact yeah, the hour. track. Yeah. yeah, but different hours. Yeah. So you like one, uh, for example, the next race happens in the same place as it would happen in the in the in the previous to last race, like the penultimate race, right? Except that, of course, it is like. Uh, I guess dusk or something. So it, it looks like very different. Okay, so here he's like saying, "Well, we're we place first, but you're not even you know scratching the surface." Yeah, it's like, don't get ahead of yourself, right. rookie. <laughs> yeah, if you want to avoid that disgrace, like improve your driving. He's like he's like in tough love, uh, tough love mode right now. He's like, you're, you don't get you know don't get cocky. <laughs> but it's actually hilarious because he just kind of. Breaks yeah, down he, he's a softie. Yeah, he's a softie at the end. He's like, oh my god, please come he's back. He's like super soft. Please don't yeah. die at the last race. Or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't overdo it. Uh -huh. I don't want to lose you. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, so this is Wonder Hill. So again, this track uh, is the same actual circuit, except that it has a different layout from the penultimate race. Except, of course, in this, the, the time is like 5 p.m. It's, it's the same as Heaven heaven and Hell, I think. Right? Heaven and Hell. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one. The funny thing is that these places, these races take place in real life places. And at the time, I've never been to them, right? But like the previous right. race, and uh, it's reused a lot, it takes, it takes place in Yokohama. And Yokohama is like this port city in Japan. You're nearby like a lot of water. So if you look at some of the courses, I think later in like out of blue that course, you can see like boats and stuff on the on the side. Yeah, so, there yeah. is this really annoying drift part exactly yeah. in the in the marina yeah. part, in the, in the yeah so, where the the big ship are. So if you know the location, you're like, oh yeah, I, I can see that this being like Yokohama or I don't know about New York. I don't know I don't know where they got this room for New York to race like this, but. Like, <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't know. But it looks cool. I mean. I mean, that's kind of the thing about the Ridge Racer is that it is kind of supposed to look cool and play cool first, yeah. and everything else is a second, yeah. like second. They, yeah, first. realism is something that they didn't really care about. As you can see the race, and you bump to the wall, and you're not like getting destroyed. Oh yeah, yeah. Just bumping. But so on that that part, when you go up, that's basically the second layout for this, and this, that's the build to the mm -hmm. race. I have to right. Right. But I remember, I remember for me, I never grew up liking cars, or I don't know how to drive. But even then, this kind of game had a lot of appeal to me because. It didn't lean into the realism. They just lean into it being fun and cool. So even the cars, like they have this facade of it being they're, them being real makers, but they're not real car, you know, manufacturers. They're just made up for the game to make it sound like it's a real company. So I mean, yeah. they are based on many like yeah. cliches and stereotypes right, yeah, of, course, of yeah, the actual of course, car yeah. industry, right? Yeah. Like the American cars being like, you know, drag race yeah. cars. But for me, that they didn't know anything about cars. You could have told me like Asoluto is like the best brand, in, you know, in the world. I'd be like, okay, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's an actual car. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I like that too. I really like that they created like this fake world, but made it really believable. Well, and this thing about this game too is that it's connected, and then it's also a thing, right? Uh, Namco at this point, you have to kind of look at it in the brighter, like the, the, the bigger context is that they had at this point, uh, it was releasing or would release just after this is um, Electrosphere, like Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere. Right. And that game, uh, and this game, would be combined in terms of like the actual setting in Ridge Racer 5. 
which has sponsors from both. Like, funny enough, like the cars, actually, actually like the liveries in the cars, mm -hmm. have sponsors from R4 and from uh, Electrosphere. Yeah, I mean, so it's kind of like yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they continue to do that too. Like the later Ace Combat games has the that Rainbow Girl's sister as a pilot or something. So. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah, right. Yeah. Ace Combat Five actually has yeah. has her, yeah. yeah. But like, sadly, there is no actual direct continuation of this particular game. Even though there is a Ridge Racer Type Five, it is much more based on the types of Ridge Racers that came before it, like Ridge Racer or mm. the original Ridge Racer. So it's much more arcadey. This one, the, the story mode for this game was kind of attempted again at a different game called R Emotion Racing, I don't remember the name, there was the, for PlayStation 2 and, and GameCube, that there was a game that actually, from Namco also a racing game, but it has actually licensed cars. Are you thinking of uh, uh, R Racing Revolution? Is that the one you're thinking of? Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. R Racing Revolution, yeah. Or Emotion, Emotion was a different one. There was one from Squaresoft, there was like Racing Emotion or something, mm -hmm. for Play 2 uh, as well. Anyway, yeah. So, on that, they tried to do something, but again, this shares no staff with that game either. Mm. So that's why it didn't it doesn't capture the same feeling, I guess. Because again, the story in this game is, funny enough, kind of like, completely irrelevant. <laughs> at a, but at the same time, it does add uh, a very kind of interesting layer to this game, because after all, right, there is a, a thing about this game that goes a little bit beyond just being a racing yeah, game. Yeah, it gives you some stakes, because like I mean, thing. the game is solid enough, or it could have just been a course by course, you know, get cool cars after each, you know, course yeah, exactly. and get a, get a, you know, hear cool tracks game, but the cutscenes and the little, like, the stories are actually pretty cliche at the end of the day, but they add just enough yeah, to are. give you, like, <laughs> oh, I'm racing for something, right? I have a goal, right? Like, I'm trying to, like, like not get this guy team? mad at me, or yeah, the American team, like, you're trying to save this, like, company that's almost bankrupt, right? It's like, it's... Yeah, but that's kind of like, the American team actually mirrors something that happened in Formula 1, actually, with William. Okay, so I didn't know that, okay. So let's, there's a bunch of stuff in this game that actually mirrors things that happened in actual motorsport history. Isn't the director of this this team supposed to be, like, a caricature of a real racer team or something? Like, the, this, like, the, the solo uh, team. I, I'm not I sure, remember reading I remember about reading that, something I about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember reading something about too. I mean, there is, there is clearly, the, the, the people that made this game clearly had a bunch of uh, interesting ideas about how this game should be, but also they had a lot of respect for the actual racing genre, mm. like the actual motorsport, right? And you can kind of tell that because the way they, they made deliveries for the, each of the teams and the way they, like, each of the cars has its own little thing, I mean... It's, it's really impressive, especially with all the car designs, because they had to design all the cars from scratch, basically. Okay, does he like us now? <laughs> Alright, he's congratulating us. Yeah. Oh, but it's to be expected, don't get it. Don't yeah, get it yourself. The very least first, right? Don't get cocky, <laughs> rookie. <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't graduated yet, so rely on your instinct alone to win the race. Beginner's luck. <laughs> like, yeah, the beginner's luck. Listen, you may be able to win, but that doesn't make anything of you. Like, think rationally about the race. This guy's like so projecting. He's like, uh, it's really funny. Yeah. I mean, like, he's, he's trying to be like really harsh because he doesn't want like you to die at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, you 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 can't actually die in the game. It would have been funny if you could have died. Oh, that'd be like that'd be some pseudo fifty one level nonsense. Like this what was it. <laughs> You die in this yeah, like, fire pro wrestling. Remember you, the ending you, of the the wrestler killed himself or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, and then the rest of the game is like a first person like Resident Evil yeah. mystery. I love I love these details. Them. You get a new car and like they hype it up, right? They all stop talking. Yeah, and speed. also you, you have like the actual you have the trailer design for the actual team, mm -hmm. which is also pretty cool. Yeah. I think the race girl, the, the the race queens, and the beginning of the race are all different too. Like per yeah. teams, it's like. Also, this car is actually the flagship car for Rage Race. Fatalita. <laughs> yes, Fatalita. So it's kind of cool too. Like again, depending on the results of the race of the previous heat, you get a different car here. So uh, yeah, that's the way to kind of you know get all the cars and everything. But in this particular run, we're playing with the fastest possible cars in the game. Literally, because like Asoluto uh, and uh, Solvolo is basically the fastest combination in the game. Makes sense. It is the main character. It's like the canon main character brand, right? So, Asoluto. Funny enough, right? Because it's not the Japanese, right? Yeah. They have a team and everything, but they're not, not there. Like, uh. 
You're not exotic enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this one happens in USA. I'm not sure where though. Is this is New York. Yes, all the USA courses. Oh, the two New USA courses are New York, and the final was in LA. All yeah. right. Oh, here it should say that. Or it said it, it says it when you uh, in the beginning, basically before this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Edge of the. Uh, Make it glow is probably my favorite track in this game, actually. <laughs> I, I like I like both of. Them. I like all the, the, the night tracks with yeah. their... I mean, in this particular run, I haven't changed the actual soundtrack. Cause the soundtrack, you can change it the, before the race. Yeah, you can actually select what it, track. Yeah. But I have left the uh, quote-unquote official selections for the run. So every every track has the actual you know track that would go along with it, mm -hmm. as we would as you would play without changing anything. Yeah, then the... Which I think is what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the day, I mean, I switched it later, right? But in the beginning, like, oh, let's just hear, yeah. let's just hear what they think. Yeah. Later, I, I put like Ram Live with Funk on all track. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite track. Yeah. But this particular like uh, music track is probably my favorite in the game, Naked the Glow. In yeah. terms of race tracks, the Remix is track, really There's good. a later one that I really like. It's also in Yokohama, Out of Blue. That one I really like. Yeah, Out of Blue is really cool. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult though. Yeah. That one is like suddenly the, the, it gets harder because like I think it's right after you get a new car too. And yeah. it's like, so you're yeah. way faster, but the course is way more cramped and there's like more turns. I remember being like, it being really hard at the time. I mean, the thing with this game though is that if you kind of go through the story like we're doing now, like going through the progression, the tracks, they don't get particularly difficult. They, they are, they're pretty wide, right? Until you realize that, yeah, well, you're meant to race them with the fastest yeah. car, actually. So at that point, it's they're really cramped. So try racing this track with the last car you get for the last race, like the, the F1 kind of copy. Yeah, the turns get so hard suddenly because you're actually going so fast. Like you're, you're, top you're going really yeah. fast and you have to like drift very precisely because otherwise you just slam into everything. At this speed actually, it's not that hard. So the actual like difficulty curve is actually very well designed because, mm -hmm. again, I mean the last race is a joke basically because it's, it's an over. Right. <laughs> but uh, I mean the race before that is really tough. Like having yeah, that one is a toughie, yeah. Yeah, it's just difficult. Uh, here's a thing that I usually drifted, but then I realized I, sh I, could, I just could just turn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to drift. <laughs> Looked cool though, but I didn't, I, I, you know. And here I had to drift, yes. So the, the drifts are kind of a weird mechanic in this game. It's not like modern games where you drift. I mean, if you've ever played Red Re Racer, you kind of realize that the drifting is kind of very unnatural. I mean, um, I don't drive, yeah. I don't drive, so I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, this, I'm yeah, like, this oh, is fine, I mean, I'm just sliding around. But even comparing to like Outrun, right? Or other games that have drifting in them. This is kind of a little bit, you know... I, I guess there's kind of a finicky, because mm. you're based... Or like Daytona USA or something. Like in this game, the drift is very specific to particular points in the track. I mean, you can drift anywhere, right? But uh, the way you start the drift and everything, there are a lot of variables. So it's a bit... Hard to yeah. get like used to. I do know you lose a lot of top speed after a drift. I remember you having to get used to that. Like after, like post drift, like, like what was it? Your speed just drops dr dramatically. So if you drift badly, you end up losing like your gear, right? You go back to like. Yeah. yeah. If you drift badly, you lose a lot of speed. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is basically to drift as least amount as possible. Like for example, there I just barely scraped past without drifting. So it's like that's good enough because I didn't lose so much speed. But it's like the idea is to drift very, very small uh, amounts, so you can just get yourself in the, in the correct orientation and you keep going. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like cool looking if you do it that way, but it's like super fast. Drifting feels so good though. <laughs> I mean, it, the tracks and the the sound and everything is, is cool. Like it, it does give you a feel of you know. I mean, again, this this game uh, Ridge Racer as a series is one of the first if not the first game which had an emphasis on drifting. Hmm. I mean, it is of course a series that is based on the whole mountain racing thing from Japanese uh, you know, car culture. But besides that, it actually has a drifting aspect. And the drifting aspect is, you know, the mechanics for it are, are very much, you know, more elaborate than uh, other games at the time. And of course you get like Daytona, which has drifting as well, but it's, you know, it isn't as much of a focus. It is a focus, though. You can't actually play a ton of wheel drifting, but it's, you know, it doesn't have the same... Uh, I mean, racing a, a, a like American stock car, which yeah. makes no sense, but it, you know. I'm just so impressed how, like, like how much this holds up. I know, I know it's like low poly, but it still looks so good. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> by the way, no, no, it looks so good because it's like upscaled to the 1080p. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I was gonna say. Yeah, the, it's low poly, but it's been texture filtered and it's also been uh, like up -res. Oh, is this so? Are you playing on? This is the re the was it the anniversary edition you're playing on? No, no, no. This is the original oh, game. Okay. It's just that I've uh, upped the resolution for the I game. See, I see. And in this game, it looks amazing. There's some games where that doesn't work, but this one looks really sharp. Yeah, that's really good. So I thought, like, usually I would keep the game looking as it would look original. Like that's kind of the way that I want to show things in the channel. But sometimes if I see that a, a, a mod or something that I can do to the game makes it look better without changing much to the aesthetic, I'll use that because, you know, this game benefits from that great. He's so happy right now. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, you did it. Yeah. He even took off his sunglasses. He's like, all right, you're cool. I mean, nothing must be allowed to get in the way of a goal, right? Yeah, if you want someone to like you, just get first place in a race all the time and they'll like you. Yeah, it's, I guess that happens with all yeah. racing teams, right? So this is out of the this, blue, which uh, is the one in Yokohama, yeah, this one which I like, is the, yeah. the one you mentioned. This 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 track is is difficult. Although the harder track I was thinking of was, was the next one in Yokohama, it's Phantom Mile, I think. But this is this is my favorite. Phantom yeah. Mile is yeah. so hard yeah. because it's super That's short. That's what I was right? But it's the same same location. But I like this track a lot. This is one of my favorites, I think. With Lucid Rhythm, yeah, this track with Lucid Rhythms is the way to go. <laughs> this yeah. is cool, yeah. But also because it's it's like. Um, it's like early morning. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like the color of the sky is like it's that it's like particular dawn. hour, yeah, right? Dawn, yeah, it's yeah. like dawn, right? The dawn. Yeah. So and they and they also look at this thing because it is the same basic layout up to a point because it, then it changes, mm -hmm. but also the graphics in the track and also like the small details for the event are different. Yeah. So this race is called different, and so he has a different logo and he has like in the track he has different stuff. It's actually pretty cool how they how they do that. This drift sucks. I remember this being being a mess. There's the boat. Osama Harbor Town. Harbor Town. Yep, and that, there's yeah. a there was an advertisement for his combat right there. The <laughs> <laughs> and th I could never get this drift right. I I, I do it. That right, one. And then that one's tough. Huh? That one's tough. Yeah, I remember that one. That's really difficult. Yeah. I I know how to drift it, but I couldn't I couldn't manage to do it in the in the race. I still win though, but it's like yeah, you know. <laughs> I wish I could have done it better, but you know. And so we just passed uh, one of the Terrazzi cars, right? And that car has like three wheels, because of course, right? Reminds me of the, one of the cars in Cyber Formula. Oh, yeah, yeah. the Kawamori yeah. design cars. Like there's that, always that one team in Cyber Formula where they're like, they're not like super good drivers, but they really experiment with like tech and stuff. So all their cars are like super aerodynamic and weird. But they try to win they by like They have like, like this wind sail thing on top, yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Reminds me of that, that, that company. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, so this race is the last one and the second, and then when this is done, it moves on to the final mm -hmm. GP, which is the end of the game. So, nice turn. This drift is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Good turn. But it's it's a it's kind of an homage to the first Ridge Racer track, right? It has the same kind of blind corner with the rock. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. There's there's a lot of these games which are kind of small homages to Ridge Racer history and of course the factory racing you know in bridges. Like that reminds me the, the retail <laughs> version of this uh, came with like a was it 60 FPS yes. version of Rage Ra Ridge the Racer. High spec, yeah. yeah, high spec version. Yeah, yeah. like the it came with a demo disc and also then included in the demo disc was a complete version of the first game uh, in 60 FPS in high. Yeah, I have it it's sitting on the shelf. I can see it from here. It's right there. I see the disc. <laughs> The yeah, well, it's <laughs> it's really really cool, and uh, of course, it is a, the best version of the game to play. Basically. That's one of the few actual game. legit games I have. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have this game legit, yeah. sadly. <laughs> okay. I had a friend. I had a friend lap. when they were graduating high school. He was just giving giving away games for a very uh, small price, and he, he has like I'm I'm selling R R Ridge Racer for like two bucks. I'm like, all right, give it to me. Give me R four for two bucks. That's a steal. And, yeah, it's that's crazy. And I think he, I remember him asking me like, I think I made a mistake. Can I have it back? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's mine now. No, the all sales are fine. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I so messed yeah. up the, the last drift. I was just thinking like, like, if he did if he didn't understand the value of this game, that's your fault. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it is. Uh, there is a, spe a specific thing about late uh, generation uh, like PlayStation One mm -hmm. games. Let's say this game, Metal Gear Solid, right? Vagrant Story, uh, you know, 
all those games that came around that same around the time, like 99, 2000, have a particular quality to them, which, you know, yeah. it carries over into the PlayStation 2 a little bit, but I don't think uh, it kind of lined up with the budget and the teams and also the graphical expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But even, like, the small look, look like the helicopter there, like, a lot of the stuff in this track is, you know... It animates it, so you'll be like, oh, you, you finished, but there's a helicopter waiting to like to get like the footage of you. <laughs> yeah. it's, actually, it's actually pretty cool. So if you think about it, like it being an actual event, that's what you would do, right? Put the helicopter right there at the finish line, so you get you capture the guy like finishing. Yeah. And you have the replays, like, you know, the highlight reels before the commercials on TV, right? Or whatever it's like. Exactly. Yeah. There is also a mode if you press one of the R buttons, I think, the one shoulder buttons, you can actually toggle like a uh, temporal anti-aliasing. A very, 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 very rudimentary temporal anti aliasing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it also present in Ace Combat Electrosphere. But uh, it, it, it was an interesting effect at the time. The fact that we're trying to make any kind of anti aliasing in this game is crazy. I don't enable it in this run because it looks like garbage in high res. So that's why I don't do it. But yeah. <laughs> still fun to note. Uh, yeah, so I also like the car just fly <laughs> off, right? So, like, Absolutely no realism at all, it's like, whatever. I'm surprised they're not yeah. afraid to show the races in these angles, because which means they, a, lot of, a lot of the environments outside, they actually made, right? They're like going outside the yes. courses and stuff. It's like... There's a lot of actual... Uh, they model a lot of the course. Yeah. Like, just not just like the race itself, the track. There's a bunch of stuff afterwards, too. But not too much, but it is enough that you can get like really good angles and it doesn't look broken. Yeah. So let's see what the guy says now. Or friend. Mm. Hmm. Another first, but he's, he's like, 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 oh, come on, like, well done. He's know. trying to, he's trying to regain his composure. It's like I got a little too dramatic last, last race. All right, like, yes. But then he's like, you're almost, you're, you're like, once you reach, almost reach perfection, right? It sleeps away. That's the nature of perfection. Like, he starts getting philosophical. Yeah, he's being all insightful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's all deep, yeah. like, to the foul GP, the chosen. You know, it's like, oh man, like, there's no turning back now, like. Jeez. Anyway, so that's been the first part of uh, R4 with my good friend and you know guest June. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> any final thoughts on the first part? No, no, uh, thanks for having me. And like, I mean, I don't know. This game is one of those games where it's like I might not play it all the time, but I'm always listening to the uh, soundtrack. And so it's like I always think me about too. it or get exposed <laughs> to it constantly. So yeah. <laughs> so, it is part of our yeah. like culture. But seeing it like this is actually really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those purposes I had the channel for, right? It's like basically talk about stuff that is, to me, really important. So I thought, why not invite somebody who also, uh, you know, finds this important? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So, yeah. Yes, so good. So uh, until next time, remember to like, subscribe, all the stuff that you, you should be doing with the, the, the bell button and all that stuff. Leave a comment for any stuff you want to do, with the, you want to see that we do afterwards. And yeah, it's been everything for now. So, game on.